Hello lovely people and welcome back to my channel. So today I'm going to talk you through how I drew this black and white picture of a swan using ink for day 17 of Inktober. I'm also going to talk a little bit about the pros and cons of Inktober itself. I've mentioned a bit before about the pros and cons of using ink but I thought I'd go a bit further and talk about the pros and cons of the whole Inktober thing itself. So before I do that I thought I'd mention a little bit about how I started off this picture and as you can see I started out by doing a rough outline in a very light pencil of most of the shapes that I had to draw and I did use a reference picture as you can see and I think that's really important with something that you want to make kind of as realistic as possible and um, the important thing to make sure if you're using a reference photo certainly if you want to possibly go on and sell your art piece is that you've got permission to do that so a lot of things that you look up on Google, Google um, will require you to have um, permission because a lot of things will be copyrighted so a way you can get around that is to either take your own photographs which is fine if you've got a good camera and time on your hands and a beautiful looking swan hanging around near you but the other way is to um, find a website that allows you to use pictures for things like your paintings that you might want to sell so these might be royalty free websites or copyright free websites so these are really good ones to use because then you're not going to be worried about um, infringing any copyright laws or upset anybody okay so I did print off a picture of my reference and um, use that to kind of mark out in the first place the underpainting so that's using a really pale um, wash of ink although it was black ink it was very diluted and that just gave me an idea of where the lightest lights were going to be and the shadows as well so straight away I thought that the best way to do a picture of a white swan was to try and maintain or um, keep the white of the paper as much as possible because you'll never get it back to white especially if you're using ink so even if you think that you might be able to use a white gel pen as I've done in the past with certain things um, it's not the same as keeping that white of the paper that you've got originally so later on you'll see how I use a little bit of um, masking fluid in a pen and that just made sure that I was not going to be going into the white of the paper and as I said I'll show you that a bit later um, I didn't use it for the feathers or anything um, I just tried to make sure that I didn't go over them which as long as you don't put water on them when you're using ink the ink should stay where the water is and not go onto the areas where you've kept them dry and you haven't put water on so as I went through this painting uh, my plan was to just start off with very pale washes and gradually build up into layers using a slightly darker or more concentrated uh, mixture of the ink and water. And it was quite a challenge again this week I thought because um, I think with feathers and anything like that and obviously trying to draw white feathers with black ink I kind of give myself a challenge don't I <laughs> but um, there's quite a lot of detail and like I said last week it's quite important to take a step back and not try and completely copy or duplicate your reference picture use it as a guide and then try and put your own kind of flair in it and not worry too much that you're getting it exactly right. So here's the blue masking fluid that I mentioned and this is really handy so that when I do the washes as you can see here when I'm going in with darker shades of ink um, I can go straight over those 
mask, masked out areas and maintain the white of the paper. So the other thing I was going to talk about as we carry on with the painting going on now was the actual pros and cons of Inktober itself. So I've mentioned a bit before about the pros and cons of ink and still sort of getting used to those myself but I thought I'd mention the good and the bad things that I found certainly so far with Inktober as a challenge and the good things first so it is a challenge and once you start it you're kind of tied in and obviously there's no one saying you have to do it every day or anything like that but I think I'm the sort of person that if I start something then it makes me quite determined to finish it so that's kind of a good and a bad so it kind of encourages you to draw every day which is a good thing and obviously by drawing every day you get better at it and using ink as a medium gets you to practice something that you might not use normally I certainly would not have chosen ink as a medium if it weren't for Inktober and to be quite honest I didn't actually give it an awful lot of thought I just thought before October started hey I'm gonna do Inktober and that was it I didn't really think about the drawing every day or how I'd fit it in or anything like that I just started it and now I'm gonna finish it so it's got some goods and bads and a couple of the other things that I do like about Inktober is that it gets you to explore the medium of ink but it's also quite nice that you've got lots of other people that are doing Inktober as well so it kind of spurs you on and gives you a bit of motivation and it's really nice to see what other people have created and their take on the word of the day if they're following the official guidelines or if they're not and they're using something else then it's just really nice to see other people's drawings and that motivates you and inspires you and gives you a bit of a boost if you feel like you're flagging so we're kind of over halfway now which is great and I think I'm gonna make it to the end it's been tough but um, some good days some bad days and that brings me to one of the downsides of Inktober is time and I guess certainly for me um, that is my biggest problem because I'm not even creating a video every day but I am doing a drawing every day and putting it on Instagram and if you want to see that then click on to Arcdits on Instagram or Twitter and that's where I'm posting the other pictures that I'm doing for the month um, but yeah I think time is a big issue and it's not even it's not even motivation because I'm quite happy to draw I love drawing and painting and experimenting with all sorts of different um, techniques and things like that but when you've got other commitments um, you know you've got children you've got possibly other jobs you've got houses to look after meals to cook all sorts of things like that and it might only take half an hour or an hour maybe out of your day but having to do it when you've got other things to do can be a bit tricky to fit in some days more than others so that's my big um, disadvantage I suppose of Inktober is time and it's hard work and sometimes it's hard to motivate yourself and sometimes you're tired um, but as I say the good thing is that if that's how you feel you can probably guess that there are going to be other people out there doing Inktober or doing similar challenges who are feeling the same so you can get some sort of comfort from that and usually I watch a couple of videos and maybe even while I'm painting and that kind of gives me another boost to keep going so another pro then another good thing about Inktober is that um, it does create a good art habit so I think when you're doing something regularly every day you get into the habit of drawing and the benefit of that of course is that the more you do it the better you get so I think I've noticed in my own art that I'm finding um, the drawing part of it certainly is a lot quicker I'm not making so many mistakes I'm getting 
shapes and things down a lot quicker when I'm drawing the animals for Inktober. Um, that said, with this particular piece, um, I suppose again the time problem is that I would probably normally spend a lot longer doing a piece like this to get it just right and because I've been kind of forced into doing it in a day um, I haven't spent as much time on it as I want maybe that's a good thing maybe not maybe it forces me to get it done and to stop faffing around but I think generally speaking I would like to be able to spend a little bit more time just perfecting it getting it just right So I found the, um, the feathers quite difficult on the swan itself because as much as I wanted to create lots of layers of light ink and gradually build them up, I still wanted to keep them very pale because they are white at the end of the day. So I did find it quite tricky to get that depth and the illusion of the feathers being quite fluffy but without putting too much ink on and losing the whiteness. Um, so I guess I think the main way that I thought we could get a really nice bright white feather was to contrast with dark background. And that's why I then went in and put in more of the water in the background than I'd originally planned. Yeah, it certainly was a bit of a challenge and might not be the favourite medium that I would choose if I was to draw another swan. I'd probably use charcoal or pencil or something like that because in that way then you can lift off colours to create those highlights instead of having to leave the white of the paper. But I do think it's made me be a bit more bold with putting in really black colours like I'm doing just at the end here just to compare with the white of the swan and make it kind of pop and stand out a bit. And the other thing to remember with ink that I don't know if I've mentioned before is that it does dry a lot lighter so I did find myself having to do several layers to get the the darks as dark as I wanted to but once I was happy with it and I'd finished the water I rubbed off the masking fluid and then just added a few more details or ink over the white areas to blend it in a bit so if you've liked this video please subscribe comment below and I'll see you next week for another video thanks for watching bye